Hello everybody, today we're going to be discussing uh, John of Damascus and how he's an historian heretic. This is going to be the first video of many videos uh, in regards to John of Damascus and how he's an historian heretic. This is going to be like just like the first part of uh, many videos. Um, hopefully we'll do more videos about this and maybe do a manifesto about John of Damascus and all of his works comprising all of his sayings and writings and to show uh, more in depth of his historianism. Let's get started. Um, well, uh, John of Damascus does something here in his work, the Doabus in Christo Volantibus, where he sort of compares the two natures of Christ to a man and a horse, right? When he says here, um, when we say that one is the son of Nestor and the other is the son of this particular horse, and that the one is wise and that the other is unwise, natural differences are established, for the hypostatic differences of human beings are reckoned to be natural when compared with the hypostatic differences of horses. This is clearly an historian claim by John of Damascus. Here, John of Damascus is comparing the horse and the son of Nestor, i.e. a particular man, with the divine and human natures of Christ being two particular hypostases, just like the horse and the man. He's trying to show from that saying that when you compare hypostatic differences between different hypostases of different species or essences, you get natural idioms instead of hypostatic idioms. And he's trying to show how that doesn't get you to hypostatic idioms for Christ. Of course, there are many problems with that reasoning, as that would make the Father and the Holy Spirit be both begotten and all human beings being born from a virgin. As an example, due to Christ's humanity being conceived by a virgin and his divinity being begotten from the Father. But we wouldn't say that these are natural idioms, as that would have to to include all the hypostases of the respective usia or nature. However, the point of the matter is that he's comparing the particular horse and particular man with the divine and human natures of Christ. This would have to entail two hypostases or persons and thus Nestorianism. According to John of Damascus, Christ is two hypostases. Um, his sayings and writings imply furthermore uh, his Nestorianism of comprising of two hypostases. An example here would be uh, from his uh, same book, right, uh, the Doabus in Christo Volantibus. And again, the one and the same hypostasis cannot differ from itself through that which is constitutive and characteristic of it and separates it from the other hypostases of the same species. I mean the hypostatic idioms, the aggregate of which cannot be seen uh, in another hypostasis. The Damascene here disagrees that the self-same hypostasis can have a difference within itself of aggregations uh, of, aggregations of hypostatic idioms. Those aggregations which the two natures each have one of, which one nature does not take from the other, but only retains its own aggregation. So if each nature has its own aggregation of hypostatic idioms, then that would have to result in two hypostases. Um, furthermore, here John of Damascus is trying to say that the self-same hypostases cannot have two sets of hypostatic particulars or idioms. It cannot have two characteristics or properties, two hypostatic uh, characteristics or properties. Um, and so from that, if uh, you have a hypostasis that has the self-same aggregation of hypostatic idioms without a distinction, a, not even a qualitative distinction, um, you would have to, uh, if Christ possesses two natures, each one having its own uh, particular individualizing characteristic idioms um, that distinguishes it from the other hypostases of the same usia, then you would have two sets of hypostatic, uh, two, uh, two sets of hypostatic idioms or two aggregations of hypostatic properties or idioms um, in Christ uh, for their respective natures, which would have to entail two hypostases. Each nature would be two hypostases, which would be a hypostasis. And also here, according to John of Damascus and the sixth session of the seventh ecumenical, of the seventh council, right? Of course, they call it a council. It's not really a council. I would call it a robber council. We wouldn't believe that it's an ecumenical council, but they believe it's an ecumenical council, right? Uh, Nicaea II, right? As what they call it. The, the, the way they define hypostasis is they say that hypostasis is a certain or a particular essence or nature with properties. But if Christ is two particular natures after the union, each having their own set of properties and hypostatic idioms, then that would entail two hypostases in accordance with the definition of the John of Damascus and this, uh, the seventh uh, council called Nicaea II give. Right, the definition they give is a particular nature with properties. Each nature of Christ would be a particular having uh, uh, its own properties, and therefore uh, you would have two hypostases. Uh, the entailment and the implication of that would be two hypostases. Uh, furthermore, uh, John of Damascus claims uh, and admits that two natures and two wills and two activities in Christ results in two sons in Nestorianism.
right? That's incredible because that's actually what they believe, the Chalcedonians, right? And John of Damascus, of course. And so ironically, he would be anathematizing himself and claiming that he himself is an Nestorian, right? He says here uh, on the faith against the Nestorians, if there is one and another nature and one another will and one another activity and one another hypostasis and one and another sonship and one another dignity and one another person, how are there not two sons? Yeah, that's a great uh, line of reasoning, right? Um, John of Damascus here in many of his works makes the categories of Christ dual. And here's an example. Further, that he has corresponding to the two natures, the two sets of natural qualities belonging to the two natures, two natural volitions, one divine and one human, two natural energies, one divine and one human, two natural free wills, one divine and one human, and two kinds of wisdom and knowledge, one divine and one human. This is uh, in Exposition of the Orthodox Faith, Book 3. And so here, from Exposition of the Orthodox Faith, Book 3, we can see um, John of Damascus is making the categories of Christ dual, and he just admitted previously uh, on the faith against the Nestorians in the previous uh, uh, saying, right, that uh, making the category of Christ dual, right, by saying there are two of these, two of these, and two of these, one another, one another, one another, uh, that is classical Nestorianism. But that's what um, John of Damascus does in his exposition of the Orthodox faith. He says there are two uh, qualities, two natures, two wills, two energies, uh, two kinds of wisdom and knowledge, two minds, right? Two natures, two wills. Um, that sort of line of reasoning would have to entail two persons. And that ent that line of reasoning actually comes from John of Damascus himself, right? As we read uh, in, the in the beginning here, when he says that, how are there not two sons uh, when you're making the categories of Christ dual or two, right? There's a duality of ca concrete realities and categories in that regard. That would have to entail two sons and two persons for our Lord Jesus Christ. And anathema and accursed, uh, and accursed to anyone who says that Christ is... Uh, two persons or two hypostases or two realities or two natures after the union and uh, because of that line of reason from John of Damascus he would be anathematizing himself uh, for making Christ's categories dual right and so this, uh, for these reasons, um, and this is just a brief overview, right? Uh, there will be more videos uh, covering more works and sayings of John of Damascus, showing you in clearer and more in-depth details of why he's an historian, right? But from these uh, uh, small and short sayings of John of Damascus, we can clearly see how he was an historian. And not only John of Damascus, but all Chalcedonians. All Chalcedonians would agree with, that, with, with, with these sayings and writings, right? But th that shows you a little bit, a brief overview of how the Chalcedonians are Nestorians, including the main Christologist uh, for the uh, Chalcedonians, John of Damascus. Thank you everyone for watching this. Please like and subscribe if you like it and share it to everyone you know who's a Chalcedonian who might be interested in learning more about John of Damascus or for your fellow Oriental Orthodox uh, brothers and sisters who want to know more about Chalcedonianism and John of Damascus and all of that. Please pray for me and uh, hope you enjoyed this video.